What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode. This is episode number 13 and we start today's episode off by seeing that we have an international management offer from Poland and we of course reject it. Uh, we saw that Malumbu and Dawson both accepted their contract extensions which is good because that means that neither of those players can leave on a free in January. But Jakob declined his contract um, and it said that uh, the reason he declined it is because the club couldn't afford his re-signing bonus and I forgot I needed to adjust the transfer budget in order to have enough to pay for his sign-on fee. So that was kind of a annoying but uh, even so and uh, we also offered a contract to Garmston as well Bradley Garmston because he although he's only uh, he's quite young he's 20 years old or 21 years old um, although he looks relatively poor right now he could possibly have some decent potential so we offer him a new deal he accepts it so does Claudio Jacob and there we go so four players accept new contracts and that's good because that means that none of them can leave in January uh, although Garmston if he was under 23 couldn't leave anyway but still it doesn't matter I'm pleased that they will sign new contracts and that's the main thing but uh, also as well you did see right at the start Poland did come into our and say we manage our nation now I know I've already talked about it a few times before and I'll say it again I am interested in taking a, uh, a nation on to manage but I'm not really sure when and what nation to manage when they come in um, I, I don't particularly want to go straight into a five star or four and a half star nation unless it really interests me of course England would be amazing but anyone that's been on my channel long enough knows that, uh, that, that that's as likely as Millwall uh, winning the Champions League one day and not in a video game um, so that's probably not going to happen but you know I wouldn't mind taking a project as well, someone like the USA. That's a nation I've always wanted to manage, but I'm, I'm not too sure just yet. We'll have to wait and see. But um, anyway, we take on Manchester City for the first game of today's episode. So the champions come to the Hawthorns to take us on. And of course, our last three games have wielded two wins and a draw as well. Uh, that draw came in the West Midlands derby against Aston Villa. So as we take on Manchester City, I was actually filled with a little bit of confidence. You know, I wasn't really too excited and, you know, too optimistic about our chance of getting a win or anything. But I definitely thought something like a draw, a scoreless draw, or maybe a 1-1 draw, could be achievable. And, well, the first chance wouldn't actually fall until the start of the second half. The first half was so tedious, nothing happened. And uh, Will Hughes, who got his first goal for the club against Queen's Park Rangers at Loftus Road, almost got his second there, second in two games, but his header went over the bar and out for a goal kick. And just, uh, just past Yalmark City, had genuinely their first chance of the game as Sergio Aguero collected the ball. The Argentine had space here to strike it, he did, but he put the ball wide and out for a goal kick. So, still 0-0. And 10 minutes later another chance for City, Aguero collects the ball once again, plays the ball inside towards Jordi Hiwula off the bench for City who strikes it and puts it into the side of the net and out for a goal kick and the game finished 0-0 and I gotta be honest you know before the game a 0-0 draw would have been fantastic, yes really really pleased with it and I guess it was, it was really pleasing, I was pleased to get a draw and a clean sheet against the Champions as well that's very very decent, that's now four, uh, sorry, three clean sheets in four games very good considering how bad our defence was at the start of the season but when you think about it that was probably the worst career mode game I've played in a very long time I, I can't remember a worse career mode game and it was so boring and, and yes I'm pleased to get a nil nil don't get me wrong against the champions that's a very decent result but even so, that is just so unentertaining, and I, I really want to make sure that the games I play are really, really good for you guys to watch, you know, but that was so poor, it really was, but uh, even so, I guess you've got to look at the positives, yes, it wasn't pretty, yes, it was quite boring, but a nil-nil draw against the Champion City is quite a good result at the end of the day, and football's a results business, it's all good playing pretty football, and uh, having loads of goals, but as long as you get the results, that's the main thing, but uh, following that, we took on Stoke City here, away, at the Britannia Stadium, as I almost forgot the stadium name there, at the Britannia Stadium. And as you can see by Stokes' lineup, it was a very decent side they picked. But as you look at my lineup in just a moment's time, I made, what was it, nine changes or possibly eight changes from the side that drew with City. And you're probably sitting there thinking, why on earth did you do that? You had such a good result. But the reason I did that is because all the players were so tired. They were absolutely shattered. And you would have seen that just before I went into the game. There were so many players who were on you know, yellow to a sort of lightish green stamina because they just weren't fit enough for the game. And this game came two days after the game against Manchester City because, of course, right now we're in the Christmas period. So there's quite a few games coming in quick succession. So just two days after on the Sunday, this game was being played and so many of my players just weren't fit enough, unfortunately. So a much changed side, but a good chance for those players such as Victor and Ichabi, who had a great chance here, but his head was well saved by Butland. Uh, Patrick Roberts as well. Uh, Georgia Samros, who, Samras, who's barely played for us to get some good experience here. 
year and uh, show us that they should stay in the team and Samras had a great chance in the fourth minute had a free header there five yards out but he couldn't uh, direct it on, onwards towards the goal and it was still 0-0 and in the 21st minute Peter Crouch collects the ball for uh, Stoke City finds Palacios he finds Peter Rodden Wingy the former West Brom man who goes down left hand side across the ball in and Peter Crouch does win the header but thankfully for us it hits the bar and we managed to get the ball away so Crouch almost making it 1-0 to Stoke but thankfully he couldn't and it was still scoreless and in the 27th minute a good chance for a counter here Craig Gardner collects the ball and finds George Samaras the former Celtic man who plays it inside towards Danny Ings Ings then offloads it back out wide towards Samaras it's the Greek who takes on Ryan Sean beats him with a reverse step over or tries to but it's a good challenge by Sean the cross is played in Ings wins the header but what a save that is by Jack Butland diving backwards in towards his own goal but makes a great save to claw it out and keep it at 0-0 and in the 34th minute another good chance here as Stoke collect the ball this time and find Glenn Whelan they find Breck Shea the American into Wilson Palacios Palacios finds Crouch who's looking really dangerous finds Charlie Adam but the former Blackpool man is denied by a brilliant save by Ben Foster former Blackpool and Liverpool man I should say and Rangers great save by Ben Foster and it's still 0-0 and in the 40th minute Victor in each of finds Danny Ings Ings takes on Eric Peters beats him down this right hand side great chance for Ings who goes through one on one surely he'll score no he won't great save by Butland and then Jakob's shot goes just agonisingly wide or, uh, wide at the post and it's still scoreless so a, a scoreless first half and I had no idea how both teams were looking so threatening both Butland and Foster both uh, goalkeepers trying to get into the England score making very good saves and it was still 0-0 and in the second half a great chance for a start here Victor and Ichibi goes forward but again what a save by Jack Butland and it's still Stoke City 0 West Brom 0 and you just couldn't see any team scoring because both goalkeepers were looking very very good but in the 51st minute Craig Gardner collects the ball and finds Patrick Roberts down the right hand side takes on Peters beats him with a step over gets inside with a roulette and shoots but I mean it's just <laughs> you know I thought in this game it would take something special to beat Jack Butler and that's not really what I had in mind it's a special type of goal but it's definitely something which Danny Ings isn't going to look back on with fondness in his uh, career highlights and say yep that was the best goal I ever scored in my career because as Patrick Roberts cuts inside to shoot on his left foot it takes a huge deflection off Danny Ings hits him on the chest or possibly the sort of the, uh, the shoulder area and goes past Butland who was just so frustrated I mean if he had more hair he would have been tearing it out because that was just such an unlucky goal for the young goalkeeper to concede he'd done so well in this game to look as though he's going to preserve a great clean sheet against us and instead he's beaten by a complete fluky goal as Roberts who just smashed, smacks the ball against Danny Ings and the ball ends up in the back of the net Ings claims it I'm sure Ings and Roberts will have a uh, debate who got the goal in the, uh, the dressing room at the end of the game but it was still 1-0 here and Roberts almost scored a great solo goal in the 59th minute but again Butler makes a good save so despite being uh, despite conceding a very fluky goal he was still looking very good the Stoke goalkeeper and it was still 1-0 from the corner Yannick Vestergaard ends up clipping the roof of the net there as his header goes just over the bar and it's still 1-0 so you know we, we played very well in this game you know it was still 1-0 with 40 minutes to go there were still chances for us to get another goal Kingsley Coman uh, on loan from Juventus on his first start of the game takes on Eric Peters beats him here cuts inside a great chance for the man on loan it comes to Claudio Jakob Jakob gets past his man and shoots but again Butler makes a save a great double save as Stoke get the ball away and you know Stoke did have chances you know Stoke did have a lot of chances and in the 81st minute here they had a good chance from the cross which just cleared away we got on the break Victor Anichebe or Anichebe however you say it uh, finds Danny Ings Ings turns Peters another great chance off loads the ball towards Victor Anichebe takes on Glenn Whelan beats him and shoots but again I'm denied by Jack Butland another brilliant stop by the young goalkeeper and it's still 1-0 and in uh, the 86th minute you see Victor Moses collect the ball he's off uh, a muscle by Coman it comes to Victor and Ichibi here we go on the break once again slides it through towards Danny Ings Ings beats Peters again who's having an absolute mare in this game then takes the ball around Hoof finds Georgia Samra Samra's back to Danny Ings but uh, this time Jack Butland wasn't needed because the shot went over the bar and out for a goal kick so still 1-0 and all the chances really came to us yes Stoke had a quite a few as well to hit the bar with Crouch but in the second half all the opportunities came to us but it was still 1-0 and would we be made to pay well as Mark Wilson collects the ball he finds Charlie Adam Adam finds the former West Brom man Peter Rodden wingy but thankfully for us the Nigerian shot is well saved by Ben Foster and turned behind for a corner had we conceded in injury time I would have been absolutely livid and from the corner Charlie Adam crosses the ball 
ball in towards Robert Hoof. It doesn't uh, get dealt with. Odden Wingy collects the ball and shoots again, but again Foster denies his former teammate and we get the ball away. And again does indeed finish Stoke City nil, West Bromwich Albion 1. So thank goodness for that man, seriously, because had we failed to win the game out of so many opportunities we had, we only took one of them. Had we failed to win the game, I would have been absolutely livid. But even though Butland had a fantastic game and surely one man in the match, we still won the game by a goal to nil. That's now five games, I do believe, unbeaten. Very, very decent run of form we're on at the moment. Here's a very good win away from home at the Britannia Stadium. And uh, Danny is getting a very fluky goal, settled it as well. So, as always, guys, a big thank you for watching the video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed the episode, then please leave a like. And I'll see you for the next episode of Career Mode very soon. We'll, beginning, uh, well, we'll be beginning the January transfer window. Fantastic.